Some Nopo babies have been able to make it with little to no help, but others wouldn't be household names if it wasn't for their parents. From a rock star son to the president's daughter, these celebs owe it all to their famous moms and dads. Director Judd Apatow may very well have given his daughter a career boost when he cast her in roles for a few of his films. Maude is arguably most well-known for her role as Lexi Howard in Euphoria, but her big break came courtesy of her famous dad. It also probably helps to be the daughter of actor Leslie Mann, who better to seek advice from than a parent who has already made a name for themselves. Judd Apatow-directed films Mod can be spotted in include The King of Staten Island, Funny People, Knocked Up, and This Is 40. The actor and her sister Iris have been given roles in their father's films since they were children. Judd Apatow appeared on Serious Jibber Jabber with Conan O'Brien and spoke about directing his daughters in 2012, saying, "...my kids are strangely funny, and they're bored of being on set." so they're not scared that cameras are around. The director continued, "...they get sucked into what their real problems are with each other. Like they're so annoyed with each other that they're not distracted by the fact that they're shooting a movie and it needs to go well." Judd and Leslie talk about their daughters often, something that Maude isn't always the biggest fan of. "...Does that bother you at all?" Um, yeah, sometimes. I mean, they really, they don't they think really it does. throw me under the bus. They think it's okay. <laughs> a lot. Gwyneth Paltrow is so well-known on her own that it's easy to forget that she was born into fame. The A-lister's mother is actor Blythe Danner, while her father is the late director Bruce Paltrow. Gwyneth was actually cast in her first movie role thanks to her famous father. Bruce put his daughter in his 1989 made-for-TV film, Hi, which he wrote and directed. The late Bruce Paltrow not only gave his daughter a major career boost, but he also gave her blunt yet helpful advice on navigating fame and staying down to earth. During an interview on The Graham Norton Show, Gwyneth talked about a time when her father sat her down after she'd won an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love. He said in his inimitable Brooklyn way, um, you're kind of turning into an Although you might think that Gwyneth has had it easier due to the guidance and connections she's received from her famous mom and dad, she herself might not agree. As a guest on Hailey Bieber's Who's in My Bathroom in 2022, Gwyneth made a smoothie and shared, "...as the child of somebody, you get access that other people don't have, so the playing field is not level in that way. However, I really do feel that once your foot is in the door, which you unfairly got in, then you have to work almost twice as hard and be twice as good." Angelica Houston is always a delightful actor to watch, but it's undeniable that her father, legendary director John Houston, played a role in her Oscar win. Angelica was given the role of May Rose Pritzi in her father's 1985 film, Pritzi's Honor, for which she won an Oscar in the category of Best Supporting Actress. Angelica's father may have helped her earn an accolade that many actors can only dream of. But what did she think of working with her dad on other projects? It was a mixed bag. His film she starred in as a teenager, A Walk with Love and Death, cost her a shot at starring in Romeo and Juliet. Speaking about her father, Angelica told The Guardian in 2006, "...ultimately, he wrote a letter to Franco Zeffirelli to say that I wouldn't be doing Juliet, which infuriated me, and that instead I would be working with him." As for her A Walk with Love and Death character, the actor said, "...I wasn't crazy about the part. I was a big snob at the time. I felt that the script was a bit saccharine. It struck me as being incredibly corny." Angelica was a bit more passionate about her character in Pritzi's Honor. She shared that she read the book that inspired the movie ahead of filming, and later helped influence John to move forward with directing the project. When your father casts you in the finale of the greatest crime saga in film history, the pressure to perform is pretty high. That's exactly what happened to Sofia Coppola when she was cast in director Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather Part 3 as Michael Corleone's daughter, Mary. The young actor took on the role after Winona Ryder stepped away from the project at the last minute due to an illness. Sofia famously became a director after starring in the movie, and it might have been for the best that acting wasn't the star's primary passion because she didn't exactly receive praise for her performance. No, I got beat up and it was right when I was 18, so you're already feeling a little awkward about yourself, so it wasn't pleasant, but, but you know, it wasn't the end of the world. Makes me strong. Yeah. Critics slammed Sophia's acting work and even The Godfather Part 3 as a whole. During an interview with Vulture, 
Francis took the blame for the harsh criticism of his daughter's acting, saying, I felt that I did this to her. Of course, Sophia went on to have a wonderful career of her own, but it must have hurt her terribly to be told, you ruined your father's picture, when in fact, she hadn't, in my opinion. At any rate, the whole subject of The Godfather 3 was painful for me. In a separate interview with The Independent, Sophia confessed that she has a hard time re-watching The Godfather Part 3. But she doesn't blame her dad. Critics may not have had anything nice to say about the star's acting, but her directing skills have garnered a different reaction. She's the mastermind behind a number of successful films, including Lost in Translation, The Bling Ring, The Virgin Suicides, Marie Antoinette, and more. Francesca Eastwood got her big break after her father Clint Eastwood cast her as a waitress in the 2014 film Jersey Boys and launched her film career. Given the fact that Francesca was the daughter of one of the most well-known actor-directors in Hollywood, her last name earned her fame even before she landed a role in the movie. She and her sister Morgan Eastwood documented their lives on the short-lived 2012 reality show Mrs. Eastwood and Company. Francesca is now much more than a reality TV star. Are, though. After using her small role in Jersey Boys as a jumping-off point, she's earned roles in a number of other projects, including MFA, The Vault, Outlaws and Angels, and more. It seems that the actor is in the process of creating a portfolio of work that will help her gain respect and recognition beyond her famous last name. Carving out her own legacy is something Francesca has been passionate about. In 2014, she told Refinery29, "...everyone thinks it must be so easy for me, but it's challenging to differentiate yourself from your family and have your own identity. I want to have longevity and to do things that are meaningful, and you have to really prove yourself for that." She added that this challenge motivates her to work harder elaborating, "...that struggle isn't bad. Nothing in my mind is bad. It gives me a stronger drive to have my own career." In 2022, Francesca signed on to star in a thriller movie called Clawfoot. Donald Trump's kids are perhaps some of the most infamous examples of inheriting success and wealth. His daughter Ivanka Trump got a job in the White House after her father was elected President of the United States in 2016. Some might say that she didn't have the skills for the role that Donald's status helped her earn the job regardless of her lack of experience in politics. Ivanka officially became an advisor to the former president two months after Donald took office. She had been working for her father since he was elected, but didn't have an official title at first, according to CNN. Ivanka focused on a number of issues during her time in the White House. For example, she helped create the Women's Global Development and Prosperity Initiative. The former advisor also spent time traveling to help improve workforce development. Ivanka's stint in the White House wasn't the only role her father helped her land. She also worked as an executive vice president at the Trump Organization, focusing on acquisitions and development. The businesswoman announced in 2017 that she planned to temporarily step down from her role at Donald's company, writing on Facebook, when my father takes office as the 45th president of the United States of America, I will take a formal leave of absence from the Trump Organization and my eponymous apparel and accessories brand. I will no longer be involved with the management or operations of either company." And I really do think of my role as, as daughter, and I'm there to support my father. It seems that John Bon Jovi's son, Jesse Bon Jovi, knows how to capitalize on his family's connections and influence. The rock star's son partnered with his father to start a wine company called Hampton Water, which was rated at 90 points by Wine Spectator for four consecutive years, according to its website. Although Jesse likely plays an imperative role at the company, it might be safe to say that his father's fame helped him earn the opportunity to own and market such a successful business in the first place. The father and son spoke about Hampton Water at the New York Water Experience, according to Wine Spectator. John Bon Jovi told reporters, this is not a celebrity wine. This is a fine wine, made with love and created with family." Jesse Bon Jovi also chimed in, "...we really wanted to create a wine that not only had a catchy name and a label that stood out, but also had the complexity and structure to be taken seriously by the wine community." During an interview with Who Australia, Bon Jovi revealed that his son is in charge of the business side of things at Hampton Water. He joked, "...I'm just the number one employee." 